Welcome to Urban Sniping number 16, The Propaganda War. Now today we're going to talk about something that you don't see much of on YouTube or in military circles. It really isn't discussed in public much, but it is the propaganda war. Sniping is critical to the propaganda war. Dark winter's approaching. We're headed into dark times. What we're going to do is expand our tactical tools by using the jihadi trick book so what we're going to do is a couple videos on lessons learned from the jihadi trick book what we're going to do is look at methodology from the middle east in the operations the united states was involved in then and things that we can learn from our enemy in that conflict the first one is the propaganda war in order to win a war, you have to demoralize the enemy. So one thing that a lot of foreign powers do is they film sniping operations and they use that for propaganda purposes. It's preferable for propaganda purposes to show videos where enemy troops are hit, killed, wounded. But there is another addition to that. When you're dealing with heavy infantry, you may not have the weaponry that you can reliably kill heavy infantry. So when you're looking at heavy infantry versus light infantry in sniping engagements in an urban atmosphere, number one, heavy infantry has body armor, normally plate carriers, good helmets, they may have groin protection. They have vehicular transport. They can use that for cover. And they have a lot of support weapons, both personal support weapons, grenade launchers, mortars. They have artillery, air power on call. You have to approach that type of enemy different than you would approach light infantry. Light infantry, a lot of times, does not have body armor because it reduces their speed in their ability to negotiate obstacles and light infantry has to carry everything so they won't have the proportion of heavy weapons and support that heavy infantry would have so when we're looking at propaganda operations and engaging heavy infantry you have certain types of shots that you can take to inflict lethal casualties on heavy infantry one of them is the face shot and the neck shot. Those are very small targets. They're hard to engage. Now, there's another method of engaging heavy infantry. It's called the high shoulder shot. We're going to use this PASGAT armor as an example. When you look at the opening in the side of this armor, that's roughly a six inch target. And when you think about the shoulder and arm that goes in there, it actually fits up in this area. That's a two to three inch target. The high shoulder shot is a really good tactic for engaging heavy infantry. If they're turned to the side of you, the high shoulder shot is a bigger target than the side of the neck. In 762 by 54R, 30 out 6, 7.62 NATO, 8 millimeter Mauser are ideal rounds for engaging shots like that. They have a lot of power. They'll penetrate through that joint in the arm into the thoracic cavity. Now, the secondary part to that is you don't know what circumstances you'll be in and what weapons you and your comrades would be using. You may be using a state of the art sniper rifle. 7.62 NATO and then that might not be a problem for you making those shots. You might be using a rusty Morrison Nigant with no scope from a car hide. Your engagement distance may be 100, 150 yards. You may not be able to engage and reliably hit a high shoulder shot, a neck shot, or a face shot with that weapon. The next thing to think about is if you're in an area where you can't procure weaponry, you can use certain calibers of hunting rifles. This Savage, you could utilize it in 25-06, 30-06, 270, 
28 280 Remington 7 millimeter Remington mag 300 wind mag those would help you engage those targets we talked about now preferably as a military force you want to be videotaping that so you can show that in outlets around the world to bolster your forces and demoralize the enemy now when engaging heavy infantry if we're using rusted wore out weapons or we can't get close enough to make those lethal shots then the next thing we think about is engaging plate carriers and knocking people to the ground while we're filming it because the people watching the video they're not going to know that that was a plate carrier per se and that person didn't die a lot of times the jihadi forces in Iraq and Afghanistan would film US soldiers getting hit with plate carriers the soldier recovered from that with no problem and knocked him on the ground but in the combat footage you see a target getting knocked to the ground rolling around people carrying them off the battlefield there was evacuation of the wounded you might have had a dust off so you're filming all that and the audience won't know whether that was a kill wounded or just a slight wound so what we want to do is talk about ways we can engage plate carriers when we talk about car hides that were common in urban areas you have two classes of weapons you can use the kind of weapons we're looking at here they're very good for engaging plate carriers other weapons that are common in car hides are short barrel weapons and 223, 5.56, 7.62 by 39, 5.45 by 39, 30 caliber carbine, things like that. They don't do well against plate carriers and normally they won't knock people to the ground when they hit the plate carrier. So if you're doing propaganda video as a sniping operation and you want the knockdowns, you want to use full powered rifles. So let's talk about that a little bit. So if the target is facing you and you have body armor you can hit it anywhere up in this area where the plate is and that would knock the target to the ground if the target is facing sideways to you you have a very narrow target it's six to eight inches in width the biggest part is actually the head and the side of the helmet because you can see if the helmet's sitting this way and the, and the head's in it you can actually strike this helmet whether the round goes through the helmet or not it's going to knock them to the ground if you get lucky you hit in a low area where the neck or the face is so when you look at the helmet from the other direction you see how much smaller that target is than from the side so when you're engaging those targets in review for lethal engagement you can do the high shoulder shot neck face the second part of that is strikes in order to knock the target down as a side to that you may end up inflicting a lethal or non-lethal casualty in addition to knocking the target down for propaganda purposes so when you're looking at that you've got the side helmet shot and the full-on frontal hit now if you miss the frontal shot at the actual body armor you may hit in the pelvic area or the legs so these tactics are designed that they will either give you propaganda value or they will give you actual casualties or both so this is one aspect of the urban warfare is producing propaganda through sniping to use and further in your efforts so share your thoughts Please rate, comment, subscribe. We'll see you on the next video.